Hello, I'm Dr. Ken Landa. Thanks for watching. Let's talk about dietary sodium. Extraordinarily important. We get our sodium as salt. Table salt is 40% sodium. We consume sodium as sodium chloride, consume it as sodium bicarbonate or sodium glutamate. But the amount of sodium that we get in our diet is extraordinarily important. It's estimated that it contributes to up to a third of the world's population having hypertension. The American Heart Association and the Department of Health and Human Services, they estimate that 97% of Americans consume too much salt. And if you decrease the amount of salt you consume by just three grams a day, that's 1,200 milligrams of sodium, you're going to decrease the new cases of coronary heart disease by about 120,000 in any given year, decrease the number of strokes by somewhere around 60 or 70,000, decrease the number of heart attacks by about 100,000, decrease all-cause mortality by, again, somewhere between 90 and 100,000 individuals. Obviously extraordinarily important. It's estimated that every year about 18 million people die worldwide because of high blood pressure, and that's principally from consuming too much salt. Excessive salt, excessive sodium, that's one of the top three risk factors for cardiovascular disease, premature death, all-cause mortality. If we look at how much sodium you should consume, the government says, well, if you're otherwise young and healthy, so that's about 50% of the population, you could consume up to about 2,400 milligrams of sodium per day. But if you're older, if you're black, if you have hypertension, if you have diabetes, if you have kidney disease, then you should cut it down to no more than 1,500 milligrams a day. That's very important because relatively few people achieve that amount. It's estimated that 80% of the salt that we consume is from processed foods and restaurant foods and fast foods and sauces and flavor enhancers and snacks like chips. We actually add relatively little salt at the table, and the common refrain is, well, I don't add any salt. That has relatively little to do with it. About 15% of the salt you consume is inherent in the food, but about 70% is added in processing, and only 5 to 10 or maybe 15% at most is added in the cooking process and in the eating process. Now, when we evolved over the millions of years, the amount of sodium that was consumed by an average individual was about 200 milligrams, 200 milligrams of sodium every day. About 5,000 years ago, they discovered salt as a preservative. And then all of a sudden, the average intake increased to 9 or 10 grams of salt. So that means somewhere between 3,600 milligrams and 4,000 milligrams of sodium. So that 20-fold increase over a relatively short period of time, evolutionary time, 5,000 years is really nothing. We've increased the amount of sodium we consume by 20-fold, and our bodies are designed to retain the sodium. And that's going to lead to a significant amount of mischief. Now, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of salt, contains nine grams of salt. So that means one teaspoon has 2,400 milligrams of sodium. That's the maximum you should have for an entire day. And if you're otherwise older or you have high blood pressure, diabetes, if you're black, then you should consume basically about half of that. However, the average American consumes in excess of 3,400 milligrams. Now, if we look at the food that's laden with sodium, you say, I eat a relatively healthy diet. Well, if you have a breakfast muffin or an English muffin or a roll or a bagel, you're getting a lot of sodium. If you have a single slice of bread, that contains about 200 milligrams. And remember, that's about a twelfth of all the sodium that you should consume. If you have a sandwich, that's two pieces of bread. Look at the amount of sodium in your frosted flakes or look at the nutrition information for the pizza and the pasta and the cold cuts. cuts. Don't look at the bacon or the cured meats, you'll go crazy. Or the amount of sodium that's in pickles and savory foods and burritos and tacos and chips and pretzels. Amount of soy sauce, one tablespoon of soy sauce, contains as much as 900 milligrams of sodium. Some brands, 1,200 milligrams. Salad dressings, ketchup, 
cheese, fast food, restaurant foods, all enormous amounts. So if you look at the amount of sodium in a Big Mac, 1,000 milligrams, you go over to the Olive Garden and have the fried mozzarella sticks. Well, that's 1,200 milligrams. The Olive Garden, again, for chicken parm. That's 3,000 milligrams in a serving. Or if you go over to Applebee's and have some of the crunchy onion rings, you're getting 1,500 milligrams. That's the entire day's amount in just one appetizer. Or if you have the chicken tenders plate because you want to eat relatively healthy, well, the chicken tenders plate has 3,200 milligrams of sodium. Or go over to P.F. Chang and have some of the mandarin crunch salad. If you do, that's close to 2,800 milligrams. So these things add up. And if you're eating healthy over at Outback, and you have some of the crispy, crispy Brussels sprouts, that's 2,200 milligrams of sodium. So salt, yes indeed, has a direct association with your blood pressure. And if you get older, that relationship is even starker. So for people who have problems, if you cut back on salt, you get even more benefit than if you don't have problems. So if we look at reducing salt, it's more important for people who have hypertension than people who don't, more important for people who are black than people who are white, more important people who are older than people who are younger. So they did an experiment in Finland back in the 1970s, and what they did, the whole country, they had a self-awareness campaign to reduce the amount of salt. So collaboration with industry, of course. So they reduced the amount of salt from about 14 grams down to 9 grams. So they got down to about 3,600 milligrams, still an unhealthy amount, but they reduced the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure by about 10 points each, and that meant a 75% reduction in cardiovascular disease-related death. And that was even in a country during an era when there were people who were gaining weight and increasing the amount of alcohol that they consumed, but still the sodium overrode that. In the United Kingdom, they did basically the same thing between 2003 and 2011. They reduced the sodium by about 15 percent, and doing that reduced the blood pressure by about three millimeters. But even that three millimeter reduction was a significant force that decreased the number of strokes and decreased the number of cases of ischemic heart disease. Now, the correlation between salt or sodium and a lot of the mechanisms in the body is extraordinarily complicated. We don't completely understand it. But we do know that if you reduce the amount of salt that you consume, reduce the amount of sodium, you're going to reduce your blood pressure. It doesn't matter whether you have high blood pressure, whether you have normal blood pressure. You're going to reduce your blood pressure. And a reduction in blood pressure for the overwhelming majority of people is extraordinarily important. And that's going to come along with a reduction in all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, incidence and the decrease in the incidence of stroke. Now, if you look at what happens when you decrease the salt intake, it's got a lot more to do with than just your blood pressure. So if you reduce the amount of salt that you consume, reduce the amount of sodium, you're going to improve your left ventricular function. You're going to decrease the thickness of the left ventricular wall if it happens to be enlarged. You're going to decrease the incidence of stomach cancer and obesity and kidney disease and kidney stones and osteoporosis and dementia, all from just decreasing the amount of sodium that you consume. There's a direct relationship, of course, with the blood pressure and an indirect relationship with the blood pressure. So it has to do with brain function and kidney function and heart function and vascular inflammation that's caused by excessive amounts of sodium. And you can maintain a normal blood pressure as you grow older without having to take antihypertensive medication. So if you happen to be older, if you happen to be obese, if you happen to have high blood pressure, well, if you cut back on the amount of sodium that you consume, that's going to reduce your blood pressure quite significantly. So studies looking at people who have prehypertension, so the blood pressure is not normal, but it hasn't reached the hypertensive level yet. Well, over a period of about five years, half of those people are going to become hypertensive, especially if they're over age 60 or if they're male or if they're obese or if they have elevated cholesterol. And those people have an increased incidence of the premorbid factors. So those people, if you look at them, 
they have high cholesterol, high bad cholesterol, they're more overweight, the blood sugar is a little bit higher than it should be, they have increased markers of inflammation in the system with an elevated C-reactive protein or homocysteine and their blood vessels have some abnormalities in them so that if we look at the carotid artery we find it's a little bit thicker because of the plaque that's developing. And we find that people who are taking blood pressure medicines, if they cut back on the sodium, they're going to significantly benefit. So if we look at people who are taking, say, an allopril, well, if you're taking an allopril, your blood pressure will come down a little bit, but if you cut back on your salt, your blood pressure is going to come down a heck of a lot more. And we find that certain individuals, especially the black population, they seem to be resistant to the standard kind of medicines, or some of the standard medicines, the ACE inhibitors and the ARBs, the angiotensin blockers, the medicines like Diavan will or Valsartan, those medicines don't seem to work as well in the black population. But if we cut back on the sodium, medicines work absolutely fine. So if we look at people who have what's called resistant hypertension, they're on three or more medicines and the blood pressure still is elevated. Well, if we cut the salt down, if we cut the sodium down to about 1,000 milligrams a day total, the blood pressure is going to plummet, going to decrease by about 23 millimeters. And people have resistant hypertension, especially if they're on dialysis, reduce the salt improve the outcome. It said that, well, you could reduce the sodium too much. Chances are overwhelming no matter what you do. You're not going to decrease the salt too much. After all, uh, if you need just about 200 or 240 milligrams of sodium a day, if you have a Coca-Cola, Diet Coke, that has 60 milligrams of sodium in it. Well, sodium is a major factor in kidney disease. It leads to deterioration of kidney function in addition to increasing your blood pressure, causes the kidney to put out a lot of albumin or protein. And we can decrease that, especially if you're diabetic or hypertensive or you have kidney disease, simply by cutting back on the amount of salt that you consume. There's an oxidative stress that's associated with sodium. There's endothelial dysfunction. The endothelium are the cells that line the blood pressures. They don't work very well if you have too much sodium. And if you have sodium, you're going to have a higher chance of developing kidney stones and osteoporosis. So the more salt you take in, the more calcium you're going to pass out in your urine. That's going to leave you with a negative calcium balance. So you're going to have to absorb more calcium from your intestine. You're going to have to mobilize it from the bone. So if you look at postmenopausal women who have osteoporosis, they're consuming too much salt. So if we reduce the salt, we can reduce some of the bone loss. And because we're putting out the calcium in the urine, then the parathyroid glands are going to make a chemical known as parathormone, and that's going to help rob the bone of some more calcium. And if we look at people's body weight, it increases as we consume more sodium. Why? Well, one of the effects of the sodium is it has a direct effect on your metabolism. It increases the muscle mass breakdown, so you have to consume more calories. You consume more calories and you also tend to consume more sweetened beverages, whether it's orange juice or whether it's any other kind of popular beverage. It's going to have some calories in it. Well, the calories that you consume are going to lead to an increased weight. So it's the liquid calories and the food calories. And if we look at the sodium you consume, it's going to decrease the amount of blood flow going to your brain. It's going to decrease those endothelial cells. They line all the blood vessels in the, in, in the body. And when you consume the sodium, going to impact the function of those cells. And those cells are going to reduce the amount of blood that gets to the brain and in doing so going to affect some of the brain stem nuclei that control the blood pressure and that control the autonomic nervous system so it's going to make the body more sensitive to adrenaline and factors like that which is going to ultimately reduce ultimately increase I'm sorry ultimately increase the incidence of stroke and intracerebral hemorrhage bleeding into the brain lacunar infarcts that are just little tiny areas in the brain where you lose some of the cells We're going to have diffuse or focal white matter lesions going to have vascular dementia, increased incidence.
hypertensive encephalopathy. You're going to find that the more sodium you consume, the greater your chance of having headaches and cognitive impairment. Even Alzheimer's disease has been related to the amount of sodium that you consume. And then on top of all of that, we have the gut microbiome, the bugs that are living in your intestines. Well, they're a key mediator to the effect of salt. Why? Well, salt's an antiseptic, so it's going to kill some of the bacteria. It's going to decrease the lactobacilli in the gut. It's also going to increase the production of a chemical known as IL-17. And IL-17, as we'll talk about in a moment, tends to cause a lot of mischief. It's also going to increase the amount of uh, chemical in the plasma that the bacteria make, and that's known as trimethylamine N-oxide, or TMNO. And if you've been reading the newspaper lately, you've been seeing some articles that say the increased incidence of TMNO in the bloodstream is associated with an increased incidence of cardiovascular disease. And some of those IL-17 molecules floating around are going to add to the endothelial dysfunction, those cells that line the blood vessels going to cause cognitive impairment because the blood isn't getting to the brain. Actually, we find if you have an increased amount of sodium in your diet, going to have a decreased resting cerebral blood flow to the brain cortex and to the hippocampus by about 25-30%. Obviously, extraordinarily important. And if you have a high salt intake, it's going to have profound immune changes in the gut, and that's going to lead to increased vulnerability of the brain to autoimmunity. And that's going to end up with, again, that decrease in the blood flow to the hippocampus and to the cortex. So you're going to end up with some learning and some memory problems and decrease in cognitive function and a likelihood of increased incidence of Alzheimer's disease. Well, we also have vascular damage. So we have that endothelial dysfunction we've been talking about. That's the initial event in hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis. So we're going to have decreased flow, we're going to have increased arterial stiffness, going to have increased narrowing of the arteries, going to have remodeling of some of those large arteries, going to develop aortic aneurysm in increased incidence, going to have a narrowing of the artery that leads to the brain, the carotid artery, going to have increased thickness. The muscle cell of the main pumping chamber, the left ventricle, is going to become thickened. You're going to have a higher incidence of atrial fibrillation and coronary heart disease and heart failure. Increased amount of salt also is going to lead to more inflammation, more fibrosis in some of the tissues. Going to decrease the chemical known as nitric oxide. Nitric oxide important in dilating the vessels going to increase the amount of oxidants. You're taking all these antioxidants. They're not going to do you any good. You're taking too much salt. Well, it's going to damage those endothelial cells again through the oxidation process, and you're going to make a decreased amount of superoxide dismutase, decreased activity of the enzyme that goes and reduces some of the oxide that's formed. Well, in addition to all of that, some recent studies have come out in animal models that show that increased sodium is going to parallel the severity of rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis and inflammatory bowel disease and psoriatic arthritis. And under normal circumstances, the sodium you consume has to be put out by the kidney. But as you get older, the kidney is going to lose some of its function, so you're not going to be able to get rid of as much sodium and as much water, and that's part of the reason why, as you get older, you're more sensitive to the sodium than you were when you were 20 or 30 years old. Now, there's something known as sodium sensitivity, and there some people have sodium-sensitive blood pressure increases. That was only discovered in about 1978, and in these people, consuming sodium increases the mean arterial pressure by more than 10 percent. Seems like it's hereditable in certain individuals, certainly in the black population it seems that they're more sensitive to the amount of sodium in the diet. But we know that you can develop sodium sensitive hypertension over a period of time. You can develop the sensitivity even though it wasn't present when you were 20 or 30 years old the older you get, 
the more you weigh. If you have diabetes, if you have kidney disease, the more likely you are to develop the sodium sensitivity. Now, if we look at certain individuals, people born with low birth weight or people born prematurely, they also have an increased incidence of sodium sensitivity. So those individuals are prone to develop high blood pressure later on in life, all related to the hypertension. So if you do a study in chimpanzees, we give them a lot of sodium, their blood pressure goes up. We cut back on the sodium, blood pressure comes back down to normal. Do a study in children. So if we look at the first 25 years of life in infancy, and we give children a reduced amount of sodium, then after 25 weeks, let them eat just what every other child is going to eat. And now, 15 years later, we look at the children. The children who had those 25 weeks of decreased sodium as infants, now 15 years later, their blood pressure is going to be less than the children who weren't given a restricted sodium diet. So salt-resistant individuals are young and middle-aged individuals, people with normal blood pressure, people who are white. On the other hand, the people who are salt-sensitive are older, hypertensive, they're black, or with chronic kidney disease, history of preeclampsia or low birth weight. Well, the old theory was that the kidney is very important, still very important, in getting rid of the sodium, but that was thought to be the generator of salt-related hypertension. It was thought that you store sodium in the vascular space and you just get rid of it through the kidney. So you take the sodium in, take more water with it, increase the plasma volume, increase the blood pressure, increase the flow to the kidney, get rid of the sodium, blood pressure comes back down to normal. But now we know that the skin, yes, the skin, seems to be the storage site for excess sodium. So the sodium binds to some of the sugar molecules in the skin. We call those molecules the glycosaminoglycans. And guess what? On those endothelial cells, there are glycosaminoglycans and the salt binds to them as well. Then we get some of the macrophages, those are white blood cells that are floating around in the system. They get the idea that there's some hypertonicity. Hypertonicity, there's just too much sodium, too, much, too many molecules around. And when they get that, that's now thought to have a significant impact on the likelihood of your developing hypertension. So it's now not just the original idea about the kidney, but we've expanded our ideas, and now we think that the skin and the endothelial cells of the blood vessels, they have a lot to do with the likelihood that you're going to become hypertensive. If we look at rats, they have spontaneous hypertension in certain of the rats. Well, if we look at them on a six-month follow-up, if they were given low-sodium diet, even though they have a tendency to develop the hypertension, there was a 20% reduction in the incidence of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality, cardiovascular morbidity. So for every 1,000 milligram decrease in the sodium that those animals consumed, there was about a 17% decrease in the incidence of coronary vascular events. So, extraordinarily important. Sodium, sodium, sodium. There's not anything else that you can do today that's more important than cutting down the amount of sodium. And sodium reduction is important, as I mentioned, for children too. And the more you look at sodium, the more it seems that you have to also pay extra attention to getting enough potassium and getting enough calcium in your diet. Because it seems like it's the ratio between the amount of sodium in and the amount of potassium in that can determine the likelihood that you're going to develop hypertension, develop cardiovascular event. An interesting study was done with some cosmonauts. They were sealed in a mock spaceship for 105 days, another time for 205 days to simulate the space travel on a flight to Mars. And they were given identical diets, except for the amount of salt. And those that got an increased amount of salt, they developed high blood pressure. Yes, indeed, we expect that. And they also developed an increased appetite, increased weight. So if you're looking at the label, and you should always read the label and find out how much sodium you're consuming. And remember, the sweet points are 
2,400 milligrams or less for the general population, but if you have a special risk, if you're an older individual, if you're hypertensive, if you're diabetic, if you have a history of cardiovascular disease, if you're black, you should consume no more than 1,500 milligrams. Well, you want uh, foods that on the label says they're either sodium-free or very low sodium, or low sodium. Low sodium means less than 140 milligrams a serving. Now, all this other talk about reduced sodium or lightly salted, those have a lot of salt. So the take-home message for today is that sodium, and remember, salt is 40% sodium. The amount of sodium that you consume is going to determine to a large degree how old you live to, going to determine whether you develop high blood pressure, and whether you develop a whole host of other diseases that you thought had nothing to do with sodium. That was the furthest thing from your mind. Well, sodium is extraordinarily important on all areas of the body. So that's a story about sodium. It leads to hypertension and heart disease and leads to stroke, but it's also a substance that leads to osteoporosis and kidney failure and weight gain and atrial fibrillation and reduced brain function and loss of memory. It's associated with premature death. So there's really nothing more important than you can do other than to look at the amount of sodium that you consume. Look at the label, especially if you're eating processed foods and when you go out to a restaurant, pull up the nutrition information on the computer and see what you're consuming. Because guaranteed it's going to be a heck of a lot more sodium than you ever anticipated. You cut back the sodium, longer, healthier life. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please tell a friend. Consider subscribing so you'll be notified as we post new videos. I appreciate your interest. I'm Dr. Ken Landau.